Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Behind me, 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. It was dropped off last night by the owner of a local used car lot. Um, he said this Jeep they bought at an auction with a misfire, cylinder 2 misfire, and now that they have a buyer lined up, they need this thing diagnosed because the parts cannon has been fired already all new plugs all new coils all new injectors but it's still misfiring I heard it misfire when he drove it here and dropped it off last night um, apparently it's setting an injector circuit fault and the P0302 cylinder 2 misfire so let's dig into it see if we can pinpoint this issue All right, so this thing has 132,000 miles on it. And jump into OBD2 just to see if all the monitors ran. Nope, readiness not completed. Three monitors, so they must have just cleared the codes. Let's see what's stored. P0302, cylinder two misfire detected, current and pending. And then P0202, injector circuit open cylinder two, permanent code. So that's an old code but it wasn't stored on the last drive cycle. So let me save this in a report real quick and then we'll look at the freeze frame data. All right, let's take a look at freeze frame. Sixty-five degrees ambient temp. P0302, so it's fully warmed up. It was at idle. Closed loop. Long-term trim bank one zero percent. Long-term bank two zero percent. Short terms bank two is minus twenty percent. Bank one is minus seven percent. Time since engine start three hundred sixty seconds. So how many minutes is that? About six minutes. And that's all we have in the freeze frame data. Okay. So, I'm going to take a look at basic live data right now on a cold start. And I want to see what the oxygen sensors are doing, what the fuel trims are doing, and just feel, you know, if we can feel a misfire. We'll do a throttle percent here. position okay so 12 data pids short terms are at zero long terms are at zero oxygen sensors are starting at the bias voltage let's fire it up see how it runs it runs butter smooth okay well let's let it warm up take it on a little test drive monitor our data I can I'm starting to feel a little shake. Fuel trims are pretty equal. Still running smooth. Now let's take it for a drive. All right, so the engine is mostly warmed up. I can feel just a very slight shake. Short-term fuel trim on bank two, look at that, minus 13%. I'm going to raise the throttle a little bit. Look at that. It equalizes, runs butter smooth. Bring it back to an idle. Just a little shake. Fuel trim going down on bank two. Minus, so 10% less than bank one. Okay. Um, let's jump out of here and actually look at misfire counters in the OEM mode. So you go to American Jeep. So, seat of the pants, 
This feels like a slight compression problem on cylinder number two. Nothing wrong with ignition, nothing wrong with injectors. Now, if the misfire is severe enough, it might disable an injector, but that shouldn't set an injector circuit code. Now remember, they replaced a lot of parts, so I don't know if that was an old code, but we're just going by the data that we have right now. A slight misfire, only at idle. Um, that screams to me, compression problem. So in the Jeep PCM menu, you want to go to OBD2 monitors, including misfire. And then there should be a data parameter, or a data pid, which cylinder is misfiring. So here are the misfire counters. There it is, cylinder number two. Counting up. I'm going to put it in drive. You can really feel it in drive at idle. If I raise the RPMs a little bit, it smooths right out. So I'm going to take a picture of that. What would you do in this case? I think a relative compression test would be a good, um, good thing to do. But we need to get in that cylinder, put a pressure transducer in it, and crank it. Or do a cylinder leak down check. It's going to be a valve problem, intake or exhaust, I don't know. But we're basically done. This thing probably needs a remanufactured cylinder head. It's not ticking. I don't think it's a, a cam problem or a lifter problem. It's a sealing problem with one of the valves. Unfortunately, we've seen this on another Jeep. I think it was a 3.2 V6. Very similar um, scenario. We see misfire monitor says failed this trip. Cylinder 2 is counting up right off of idle, no misfire. So it's a very slight compression loss. Uh, we might not see it on a relative compression test, but we can try it and see if um, see if we can see it on the, on the scope. So here's what a partial compression loss misfire sounds like. Just a little pop, pop, pop. So there's still combustion, it's just not contributing as much as it should. Yeah, you can you can feel it. So if you unplug an ignition coil, it's going to be worse. Um, let's try a relative compression test. By the way, the only code that came back is the P0302. Makes perfect sense. Um, let's pull in the shop. Okay, to set up for this relative compression test, I want to disable the fuel injectors. So either we can disconnect this harness right here, or we can cut power to the fuel injectors, brown and white wire, comes to fuse 64, however, that fuse also feeds the ECM, and we want spark to sink the cylinders, <clears throat> so we can't just pull the fuse, unfortunately. Another option is to disable the fuel pump, and that is this dark blue and orange wire coming to fuel pump relay which is integrated but we have a fuse here so we can either pull this fuse out or disconnect the injectors at this harness if we can get to this connector so let's take a look all right under the hood got the plastic cover off oh, we can see someone's been doing the hokey pokey right here Got some bare copper exposed on the fuel injector number two connector. Um, I don't see the harness connector. It might be hidden under the intake manifold. We want to do the easiest thing. So I think I'm going to pull the fuel pump fuse. This F70 fuel pump motor. That's right there. So it's going to be the still 20 amp. Um, so let's pull that out. Crank it over. See what it sounds like and then hook up the scope. Okay, so fuel pump fuse is pulled out. Let's just crank it and see what happens. It should die. Let's crank it again. You can hear it. <laughs> Compression loss. 
but let's uh, let's hook up the scope and get a definitive, uh, you know, proof that cylinder number two is uh, compression is getting lost. Okay, so here is the setup on the oscilloscope. So our sink is going to be on coil number two control wire. It's a blue with a tracer. Channel two. Uh, current clamp, this is the fat red wire, I think it goes to the starter, but we'll see. And then channel 3, I just want to also monitor the battery voltage, and we can see what's, what's more um, telling, the current clamp or battery voltage. You can use either or, in this case I think we'll see it on both channels, but just for kicks, we'll uh, monitor both of those. So let's uh, fire up the Pico scope. Um, so again, channel 1 is current, channel 2 is voltage, channel 3 is the sink. That's the setup right here. Uh, let's crank it over. By the way, on the current clamp, 1 volt is going to equal 100 amps. Let's see what happens. Okay, so... Okay, that's good enough. All right, so we can see clear as day. There's our cylinder two spark, and the current trace, this hump is way lower than all the other ones, and then the following one is higher because, you know, the engine actually speeds up here, the current is less, and then there's more resistance, so the current kind of overcompensates, and then goes back to a steady, the steady humps. Look at our voltage trace, it's not as clear. What we can do is for channel B, you can activate filtering, clean it up a little bit, and then we can use this scaling, bump up the scale, and then bring it back down. So, right there, very telling, we're missing a hump, and then you know, it comes back. So, this is all we need. I'm going to save this waveform. Um, so it needs the bank two cylinder head removed and then either sent to a machine shop so they can do a full valve job on it or I don't know if they're available but just put a remanufactured cylinder head on there and take care of this problem. So unfortunately this isn't going to be a quick and easy fix. No amount of spark plugs, coils or injectors are going to fix this Jeep. It's a mechanical problem. 130,000 miles Penistar. That's a shame. This is a pre-VVL version. I thought these were pretty reliable. I've seen the, a 2014 Jeep with like 220 or 250,000 miles on it running perfect. But apparently there's only one or two good years of the Penistars. I think 2014 is the good year. Everything else they have issues. Rocker arms, the cams, they have valve sealing issues. It's, it's a shame. It's always in the cylinder head. Um, but that's, it is what it is. So that's it for the diagnosis. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.